Hey, I'm Jordy. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about setting the preload of your shock and the importance of doing so. I wanted to make this video for a few reasons. Number one, just to create awareness for doing this uh, critical step in protecting your bike, protecting the longevity of your shock, increasing the rideability, safety of your bike. I think it's a step that can go easily overlooked by many and runs you the risk of doing damage to your shock, potentially blowing it out, especially if you're on a longer trip. So again, I wanted to make the video to create awareness for this step because I think it can be easily overlooked. Number two, I wanted to hopefully demonstrate how to do it, or at least, you know, make it a little bit less intimidating. There's other very good videos on YouTube I would recommend checking out. Uh, one that came recommended to me was by Off-Road, Off-Course. I think a three-part tutorial on suspension tutorial by Off-Road, Off-Course. Good video. Thank you to them. So hopefully I can make it a little bit less intimidating, show you how I'm going to do it. Um, but check out other other videos, especially with respect to maybe your particular shock or your particular bike. I have a Cogent Dynamics Mojave Pro. That's the shock I'll be adjusting. But the important thing to keep in mind is that while each shock is different and maybe has slightly different ways of adjusting it, the reason for doing this and the method for doing it, the way you measure it, the way you're going to do it should all be the same for any bike, really. You, you need to compress the bike and measure your sag. That's get you. So that's what we need to do. And finally, I wanted to make the video just to kind of call special attention to Cogent Dynamics. Um, I'm a big fan of great products, great service. It's rare, to, especially in these days, to come upon a company that stands head and shoulders above the rest in terms of their customer support, their service level, and Cogent is just easily one of those companies. I mean, probably one of the best companies I've done business with in many, many months, or if not years. Um, all right, quick story time. So I mentioned this in my modification video. Um, if you haven't seen that, you can check out my mod video to see all the work I've done on my bike. But when it came to my shock, I had ordered the lighter spring, actually, and I over time realized I had ordered the lighter spring and thought, hmm, with all of the luggage I'm planning on bringing with me, I think I might need a heavier spring. So I got on the phone, called Cogent. That was my first interaction with Todd at Cogent Dynamics. Explained to him my whole scenario, my whole plan, my trip, everything I would be bringing. And he said, yes, I think you do have the, a too light of a spring. You should get the heavier one. Well, this was still kind of back in pandemic times. Everything was back ordered. Everything was out of stock. Todd did not have a heavier spring in stock. So he went to work and located me another spring. Unfortunately, it wasn't even a whole shock. It was just the spring. And that's from another company I did a lot of business with and adore and love, which is ProCycle out in Springfield, Oregon. So he got on the phone to Springfield, called me back, said, hey, George, I've located you another spring. Um, what you need to do is send your whole shock back to, to ProCycle. They're going to switch out your lighter spring, respring it with the heavier spring, get it back to you, and then you'll have it for your bike, for your shop to install on your bike. He helped me set all of that up. That was my first interaction with Todd. Second interaction with Todd, second way he helped me out was after explaining to him my whole scenario, he said, hey, you really should think about investing in our round-the-world repair kit as well as a set of fork seals for, for your front suspension. He said, you know, bad things happen and you never can plan. You never, you never know what to expect, especially when you're like I'm going to be in a foreign country, potentially a remote village. What happens if you blow out your shock? He said, this could take you weeks to get the new parts, if even, um, to even find a mechanic to fix it for you can be hard. Well, if, I, if something happens, I will have to find a mechanic, but they're not going to have the parts. So then that could be weeks to get the parts. So he said, just bring this as small parts. It's not that expensive. Um, bring it with you. You'll have it should anything go wrong. Great. I ordered both of those, have those. We'll be traveling with those. And so Second way Todd's helped me out. Third way, I've now had like two or three conversations with Todd on the phone. Todd, thank you again, my man. He's such a patient, generous, knowledgeable person when it comes to all things shock, suspension related. And uh, he has walked me through several times now how to set the preload. Also given me a solid understanding of rebounded compression. And so as I said, it's rare to come across companies that have unwavering support for their customers and cogent dynamics is certainly without question one of those companies who has unwavering relentless support 
for their customers. They want you to be happy. They want your bike to function safely and smoothly. They want their shock to give you many years of solid performance. And they're willing to go the extra mile to help educate you and prepare you and prepare your shock to, to do that. So Cogent, I'm Team Cogent. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Cogent. Okay, so back to setting the preload. So this is a critically important step to do. We, you've got to get it done. Um, if you don't, you run the risk, obviously, if you load a whole bunch of luggage onto your bike of bottoming out a lot. And uh, I'm going to make a fourth measurement on my bike. I'll explain the different measurements to you. But then if you have set your preload for all this extra weight, and then you get somewhere and maybe you want to take all that extra weight off, well, then you run the risk of topping out too much because, you know, if you think about it, you've, you've set your spring to be much tighter to to compensate for all this weight. And then if you take all the weight off, then you run the risk of topping out and that can do damage to the top end of your shock. So I'm going to make another measurement so that if I get somewhere, want to take a bunch of my luggage off, I can maybe make a quick adjustment so that I don't top out. But critically important to set your preload so that you're not bottoming out, you're not destroying your shock, creating undue wear and tear on your shock and running the risk of derailing your trip, blowing out a shock, doing damage to your shock. Got to get it done. Now, what do we need? How are we going to do it? You do need a lift. You have to have some way to get your tire off the ground so that you can measure the full travel of your shock when it's not on the ground, right? You want to have the tire suspended in the air so that you can measure the full travel distance of your shock. What else do we need? Um, you need a pen and a pad of paper to write down your measurements. You're going to need a tape measure. And like I said, you're going to need a lift and you're going to need a friend or an, assi an assistant, someone to help you out because uh, you're going to need someone to help stabilize the bike and do the measurements for you because you're going to have to actually sit on the bike with all of your gear on and um, you're going to need someone to help you stabilize it and do measurements for you. So you need another person. The tools you're going to need, pad of paper, pen, marker, tape, measuring tape, and a lift. Critically important, you have to have a way to get your rear tire off the ground. In my case, I have one made by Motorsport Products. Um, I believe I got this from Revzilla. I think it cost 100 ish dollars, maybe 150 Works really well. Uh, we'll get my rear tire elevated. So... What we need to do, start with, the starting point for this is going to be getting the rear tire elevated off the ground. You need some way to measure how far your shock can travel in total distance. So then, so then subsequently you can measure how far it will compress when you sit on it and when you put all your, your luggage on it. Now what I've done here, what we're going to do for our first measurement is measure a, the distance between the center of the rear axle to a point somewhere above it. It doesn't matter where that is, but you want it to be directly above the rear axle so that you can see how far the bike compresses down toward the rear axle. So what I've done is I've put a little piece of tape, I think you can see that there, on the bottom of my tool tube and made a mark on it. So I'm gonna always put the end of my measuring tape right on that mark and go directly down to the center of the rear axle. And then I'll be able to measure how far down my bike compresses. So again, the first measurement we're going to make is having the bike elevated so that there's no pressure on the rear tire. Right now, I just have it up on my center stand. I'll take that off, obviously, and I'll put the lift under and we'll get the make sure that the rear tire is totally elevated. Um, my center stand doesn't really get it totally elevated. I, my rear tire, it can spin, but it's not perfect. So we'll get it totally elevated We'll measure the total distance travel of the shock. Second measurement will be what's called your static sag. And we will take the bike down off of the lift and measure the distance that the bike compresses itself, just the weight of the bike. Once the bike is off the lift, this tool tube should sink down a little bit. And typically, I think, you know, look up your own shock, look up your own motorcycle. Most, most shocks are rated at about 10% static sag. So whatever your original first measurement was of your full travel, once you get the bike off of the lift, you want it to compress about 10% of that normal 
of your of your full travel. So that's your first measurement. Second measurement is going to be you on the bike with all of your gear. So, you know, here's, I have two bags and a top case over there. You'll see more of those. Okay, just made my first measurement and the full, I got the bike up on the lift. You can see here, motorsports up on the lift. Um, my first measurement from the underside of my tool tube right here to the middle of the rear axle was 17 and 3 16 inches. Um, I'm not going metric, which is a little bit more precise in millimeters, but I can make inches work. So starting point of full travel, you can see um, rear tire is fully elevated off the ground. There's there's surface under there, so we're fully extended right now. 17 and 3 16 inches is my first measurement. Okay, we're back for the second measurement, the static sag. Got my man Mark here. <laughs> he's steadying the bike. He's got, uh, he's holding the rear here, steadying it so that it is off. There's no stands down, no center stand, no side stand, no lift underneath. Tire is back on the ground. And now the bike is just naturally compressing itself. And so we will measure what the static sag is, which is just the amount that the bike naturally compresses itself. So again, I'm going to measure from the bottom of my tool tube here to the middle of the center axle. And I got to put the camera down now to be able to do that. And I'll tell you what my measurement was and we'll go from there. Okay, we made our second measurement and we got 15 and 1 32nd of um, travel between the middle of the rear axle to the point above. And so then by doing math, I, I converted the 17 and a quarter, or no, 17 and 3 16 inches was what I had for my full travel. That into decimal point is 17.1875. My 15 and 1 32nd converted to decimal is 15.03125. And then by doing the math of a ratio, that number, the 15 number is 87.4545 percentage of the 17 of the total. The difference there would mean about 12 and a half. So my static sag was about 12 and a half percent. Again, static sag was with the tire on the ground, middle of the rear axle to the point above, measured that. I got 15 and 1 32nd inches. My total travel was 17 and three quarters, uh, I'm sorry, three sixteenth inches. So got my static sag, it's at about 12 and a half percent. Um, I think that's okay, but ideally I think it would be better to be about 10, but that's not the most important number. We're about to load up with all of the luggage, Lone Rider, Lone Rider, top Pelican case, me with all of my gear, and we will do that important measurement next. All right, I'm all geared up. Bike is fully loaded. Both side bags are on. Top case is on. As I said, both side bags are on, top case is on. I'm fully loaded on, loaded up. Helmet, all my gear. Separate video on all my riding gear if you wanna check that out. But we're now gonna measure the compression of the bike under full weight, under the weight of me, all geared up, and under the weight of the all of the luggage the two side bags and my top case mark i'm gonna get on the bike i'm gonna compress the bike my faithful assistant mark will do the measurements let's do it okay we were totally loaded up here i had all my gear on as you saw we made our measurements and <laughs> this is pretty remarkable um i think factory settings is going to be good for me i don't think we need to adjust anything so we have, if you can see here, 17.1875 inches of total travel was my original first measurement. This measurement came out to 11.71875 inches of race sag of the total weight, myself and everything on it. Actually, the 17 minus the 11 is 5.46875 inches of sag. 
that's how much the bike went down when I sat on it with all the weight. It went down about five and a half inches. That 5.46875 inches as a percentage of 17.1875, which is the total travel. So the five as a percentage of the 17 is about 32%. And my target was 33, was between 30 and 35% is the target for this shock. So I'm at 32%. That gives me, if I add a little bit of weight, that gives me a little bit of extra breathing room to get, you know, to 33, 34, 35%. So I think I'm going to leave it right where I am and then just adjust the rebound and compression a little bit if necessary. So, I mean, I'm kind of astonished and happy that um, I'm in a good spot. Uh I think the bike can handle this. I'm not a tiny person, but I'm also not a big person, just pretty average size, average weight. So um, I think, you know, I have a significant amount of weight that I've added between my two side bags and my top case full of camera gear, but I'm right there um, in the middle of where I want to be, you know, for what the shock is rated for. Thank God. I'm, I'm really happy that I got the heavier spring and um switched from the lighter spring to the heavier spring so that uh, that seems to have done the magic trick and put me right in the perfect zone this is see the yellow guy in there is my heavier spring i went from the seven uh kilogram spring to the 8.1 and that i would guess my luggage probably weighs total about 130 pounds i weigh about Oof, 170, 180 pounds. So you can do the math there. And with the 8.1 spring, we're right at 32%. So I'm going to stay there. I'm going to hold. And I will adjust potentially the rebound and compression a little bit to, to adjust the performance of the shock. And I'll talk a little bit more about rebound and compression. I hope this video was helpful, somewhat intelligible, made sense. As I said at the outset, my main goal was to create some awareness for setting your preload, checking it, making sure that if you're going adventure traveling, that you've thought about your preload. If you're adding a whole lot of weight to your motorcycle, you want to make sure that you're not overburdening your shock and, and bottoming out. Um, that would just wear, put too much wear and tear on your shock and you could blow it out on your adventure travel. And if you're a long ways from home in a foreign country, they probably won't have the parts. You'll have to get them mailed to you. It could take literally weeks to get them. So it could be a major, major problem for you. Um, so hopefully that made sense. I feel like it was pretty easy to do. Um, as I said, if you have a different shock than my Cogent Mojave Pro, you have a different motorcycle than the Suzuki DR650, then search out, do some research, seek out your particular shock, seek out your particular motorcycle. There are likely videos on them or there's likely resources online to find out what your target compression should be. As I said, mine from Cogent was between 30 and 35% and I came out to 32%. As just a quick recap, we elevated my tire we had a total travel of 17 something in total travel then with me on it all my luggage on it everything the bike ended up compressing about five and a half inches and so five and a half inches as a ratio of my total travel of 17 whatever came out to about 32 percent so my sag was about 32 percent and that's uh, right in the middle of my zone so i'm perfect and i think that gives me you know, one, two, three percent more to play with if I end up adding a little bit more weight or, you know, I'm going to be going over rough terrain at times. So that gives me a little bit more wiggle room for potholes and bumpy conditions and more weight. I also said at the beginning, I would talk a little bit about rebound and compression. Um, so I will do that now. So your preload is your most important thing to set. That sets the shock, the spring, the tension on the spring for how much weight you're carrying it preloads it to the weight of the bike and yourself and your luggage. Most important thing, prevents you from bottoming out or topping out. Your rebound, um, in the case of my shock, is there's a 
rotator at the bottom of the shock and the rebound sets the springs, the shock's ability to rebound, to, to be springy, to bounce back. And by turning that, there's actually, I don't know exactly all of the mechanics of this, but there's some sort of oil reservoir. And with it all the way, with the most oil in it, with it all the way closed off, I believe, then that's going to dampen it the most, damp it the most, and create more stiffness, make it more bouncy, more rebound. If you open it up and there's less oil, then the spring, it can compress more easily. And so then it won't rebound as quickly because it's not as stiff. There's not as much tension. Same thing with the compression. The compression is the shock's ability to go down, to compress. And if there's more oil in it, then it's stiffer and tighter and is harder for it to compress. And if you open that up and let some oil out, it's easier for it to compress and to be less stiff. So those are two also key adjustments you can make. They're not maybe as critical, definitely, certainly, as setting your preload. And Todd Ekogen gave me these the following recommendations, which I think are probably good recommendations for any shock. But again, maybe talk to your specific maker, your specific motorcycle. But he said, start with your rebound and put it either, tighten it down all the way so that it's going to be the most springy. Ride around with that a little bit. Then undo it all the way so that it's all the way open and ride around with that a little bit. So you can feel what it's like to be all the way maximum springiness and then minimum springiness. And then maybe put it back to middle and get a feeling of that again. And then you can think to yourself, okay, I, I remember what it felt like when it was maximum stiffness. I remember what it felt like when it was soft and minimum stiffness. Now I'm kind of back in the middle. Do I want to adjust it, tweak it a little bit in either direction to make it a little bit stiffer, a little bit more rebound, a little bit more springiness, or do I want it to be a little bit softer? And then you can do the same thing with the compression. Um, you know, tighten that all the way down so that it's harder to compress and then open it all the way up so that it's easier to compress and see what you like more. Um, and then just adjust to taste and with some experience. I don't... I think I'm going to ride for a while with it now and then begin to uh, tinker with those a little bit and see how I want to, you know, if I want to adjust my rebound or my compression a little bit. And those are pretty easy to do. I will show you on my bike quickly if you're thinking about this Cogent Dynamics Mojave Pro. I'll, I'll show you where you adjust those. But that's going to wrap up the video pretty much. I hope you were able to follow my methodology for measuring. Um, it's not as complicated as it may seem at the outset. I was slightly intimidated by doing all of this. Um, but it was very, very doable, especially with the help of a friend. You do need someone to help you to make the measurements, to hold the bike. Um, so you got to have someone help you. But not super difficult to do. Um, I feel really fortunate that I didn't en end up having to adjust the shock. I will show you also in a moment how I would have gone about doing that on this Mojave Pro by Cogent. But um, I want to just say thanks again to Todd at Cogent for all of his amazing, amazing advice, thorough explanations. Airplane going overhead, sorry. There's a commuter, there's a little executive airport near here, so there was just a small airplane going overhead, probably going into Jack's uh, commuter airfield. Um, so Todd, again, thank you, Todd. He was super helpful in explaining everything, making sure that I felt comfortable in getting this done. And uh, I'm just very grateful to Todd for taking the time with me. Okay, I will be back in a minute and I will show you more about rebound compression and where to adjust the Mojave Pro. And then we will call it a day, a wrap. Okay. I apologize if the light isn't that good. I'm in my garage. It's my only level surface. So, um, the light is not as less than ideal here, but this is the tool that comes with my Cogent Dynamics Mojave Pro. It's just a solid steel, I guess, or whatever the metal is, um, rod that you can insert into. Here's the shock. You can see this collar up here. This ends up inserting into holes. There, I've got it inserted now. If you can see that, it inserts into this collar. So if you have one, you can find this and do it. 
and then you crank that. Um, I didn't have to do it in my case because it came out to 32%. So that's how, with the help of this tool, you would rotate that collar at the top of your shock um, clockwise from the top down um, would tighten it down and increase your preload if you loosened it up and went counterclockwise it would loosen it and um, give it less less stiffness okay I was talking about rebound and compression too so at the bottom of my shock is a red collar and adjusting that will increase or decrease your rebound. Now, one thing to keep in mind with that is that it's from the bottom of the shock. So you have to look at it from the bottom and turning it clockwise would stiffen it up and, and, and increase your rebound, but that's from looking at it from the bottom. So um, let's look at it down here. Well, it's hard to see. Um, here, here is the shock. Hopefully you can see that. And the red collar down there adjusts the rebound. Um, it's really hard for me to get a good angle on this. Yeah, I'm not sure if that did it. Yeah, okay, so we can see. So perfect, there's the red collar. That would adjust your rebound. And again, looking from the bottom of the shock, so turning to the right clockwise, would tighten it up and give you more rebound going back the other way to the left would lessen that. Okay, so that's how you can adjust your rebound. Now, this canister on the side here is your compression, and this screw will adjust your compression. And that's how you would do that. I don't want to go into the settings of it exactly. You should probably research that yourself because I don't want to mislead you, but... Um, one direction stiffens it, one direction loosens it. Um, and that would affect your compression. So I will sign off now. Um, I hope this video helped you learn about your shock and whether you have a Cogent Mojave Pro or something else, whether you have a Suzuki DR650 or something else, I would guess that your shock is going to work in a very similar way, perhaps slightly differently, but in a similar way. So look at what you have and do your research, find out how to make all of your adjustments, and uh, just make sure you're setting your preload for all of your luggage. That's my PSA for adventure riding. If you're an adventure rider, set your preload. If you're not an adventure rider and you're thinking about it, then put this on your list of things to do and uh, if you're not a rider at all well you maybe just learned something about a detail of preparing for a trip and if you have any friends or family who are riders you can now ask them hey did you set your preload and get that all set and maybe you'll end up helping someone out who hadn't thought of this um, Todd at Cogent has told me stories of he said it's not uncommon for people to overlook this step. That's, again, why I wanted to make this video because I feel like I came very close to not even thinking about this. I got my bike back from Garrison Moto after having all of my mods made and I was kind of looking everything over, like my, you know, fuel line and fuel valve and behind the side panel is all of my wiring and I was just kind of going through the bike and th being wanting to know if I could troubleshoot stuff and making myself aware of how everything worked. And I got back to the shock and I thought, huh, I wonder if they made any adjustments at the shop or if I need to make any adjustments. I know I got the heavier spring. So I began thinking, well, certainly, you know, I'm trying to tailor this and making it specific for myself and the amount of weight that I'm carrying. So I wonder if there's any adjustments I need to make to this shock. And so I got on the phone and called Cogent, and that's where Todd impressed upon me the importance of setting your preload. So I feel like, you know, I could have easily overlooked this. When we, when we ride cars, buy cars, we don't have to go and set up our suspension. The car is good to go. You jump in your car, you put all your luggage in it, you put passengers in it. You do what you do, and you don't have to go and adjust your suspension. Not quite the same on the motorcycle. This is something you do need to think about. And again, 
easy, easy to overlook this step and not even think about it. Um, and again, Todd has told me stories of phone calls he's received from people in foreign countries in Latin America, all over the globe, saying that they've blown out their shock, can't get any parts where they are. Can he send parts out to them? And he's always happy to help. He's very helpful. He's solutions oriented. However, obviously you're at the will of whatever uh, delivery service you're going to use, whether it's the United States Postal Service or FedEx or UPS or just whatever. And if you're in a really remote place, then, you know, it could take you one, two, three weeks to get your parts and just uh, it could be, you know, trip ending or trip delaying for an extended period of time. So hope this helps. Think about your preload. Think about your rebound and compression a little bit. You can tinker with those, dial them in a little bit, and uh, safe travels. Thanks for watching. You can check out my channel for other videos on all of my mods, on my riding gear, on my luggage, on my Pelican case and the system for attaching that, um, on my Yankro fairing. But this was about Cogent. Thank you, Todd. Team Cogent. Jordy out. I'm jumping back on here to add a couple quick things. Uh, you may be thinking to yourself, I didn't see him make the fourth measurement that he described of taking the side bags off and measuring the weight of just myself in the top case for the scenario that I described of getting somewhere, taking the side bags off and wanting to go out for a ride with just myself in the top case. I decided not to make that measurement because the instances that I'll be doing that I think will be few, will be rather slim. Um, and if I do do that, then I think, you know, I'm not a crazy aggressive rider. I'm not going to be out stump jumping. I'm not going to be covering great amounts of distance. So I think those instances will be few, far and few between. And so I'm just going to, I'm just going to let that one go. I don't think I'm going to destroy my shock for a few rare occasions where I'm just kind of riding around town, not doing crazy aggressive riding. I'll be careful. And I don't think I'll top out my shock too much in that case. The other thing I'd like to mention that is pretty remarkable, I've already spoken about how enamored I am of Cogent Dynamics and of Todd at Cogent in particular for all of his incredible customer service. So I'd spoken to him this week and he helped me understand this whole process of measuring and setting a preload and we spoke at length about that. I told him my cousin was coming over Friday to help me do it. So I just went inside to have lunch after having finished this up, and the phone rings, and who is it? It's Todd from Cogent saying his spidey sense was tingling, and he had to know if I had done it and how it had gone and if I had any questions or concerns. And, I mean, like, unbelievable. That's the level of dedication and customer service we're, de we're talking about with Cogent. So um, Cogent, Todd, I am beyond impressed and beyond thankful, beyond grateful for all of your care and help and concern. And so he wanted to check in, see how it had went. And uh, he also gave me a little bit further information to take with me on just kind of uh, safeguards, just some further information about the shock. Should it need any repairs? I don't think it will, but just some kind of safeguard information that he thought he wanted to get to me in advance of my trip. So I didn't make the fourth measurement. I'm not too concerned about that. And I mentioned that to Todd, and he said, yes, you should be fine. He said, I, I like to be conservative. I like to caution people to be extra careful and protect your shock, protect your trip, protect your motorcycle, and, you know, make that adjustment. If, you're, if your weight is going to be changing, if you add another rider, then you would want to, you know, account for that extra weight of that rider. But if I'm just taking, you know, 50 to 80 pounds off the bike, I don't think that's going to really destroy my shock. He, and he agreed. He said, it's maybe not ideal, but if the instances are going to be few, then it should be able to accommodate that. He said, just be careful, be aware of it. Don't do anything too aggressive because you do, you know, run the risk of topping out a little bit. But that's the deal. So thanks again to Cogent. Man, what a day. I'm so pleased to have this all done. Uh, it was on my mind for a long time to get this done because... In order to get it done, you have to have all of your luggage ready to go. So it's kind of like a final thing, you know, and, and, and having my cousin Mark come over and help me with this forced me to get uh, a further handle on all of my packing, have everything finalized. So 
this was a big day for me because not only did I get the preload done, but it forced me to have all of my packing mostly done and ready to go and have myself organized. So I feel like I've made a giant leap forward towards being ready to go. And that date is in just a few days. Today's Friday. I'm looking to leave on Wednesday. So I'm less than a week away. And this was a final big step in my preparation and my readiness for departure. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped you with either your cogent shock or whatever shock you may have in understanding preload and the importance of it and uh, seek out other resources if you need to. But I hope I was able to help a little bit and I hope um, you have safe travels on your own motorcycle. So thank you for watching. Jordi out.